In far off Asia, where our armed forces are waging war side by side with our allies, there is an ancient country, China. China, whose resistance to a cruel and barbarous enemy, who surpassed her in arms and equipment, will go down in history as one of the most heroic stands ever made against an invader. China, whose deeds in the face of almost impossible odds, has written a brilliant path of courage and determination across the pages of time. China, whose people have had 4,000 years of experience in using their hands and hearts, many times with no more than crude makeshift equipment, uses her manpower to the limit. No thought of personal hardship here, just blood and sweat and back-breaking toil. China, where the will to defend country and right comes before all else. China, where 500 million people work wholeheartedly together against the common enemy, even as we do here, to win the war. In some sections, modern equipment has reached them. This helps cut down the time used to build roads and airfields so vital to the lifelines of the Allies. But for the most part, hands and hearts have been doing the job with little benefit of modern machinery. Where modern tools and machinery reach our Chinese allies, they are most eager to learn to use them. And with experienced teachers, soon take over many of the complex repair operations necessary to keep the planes of the United Nations flying. With our modern tools and modern methods, they have quickly adopted our modern methods of safety, recognizing the necessity for those methods as a means of speeding the return of war damaged materiel to active duty. They have found that good housekeeping in the plant pays in increased output and personal safety. They have had to do everything the hard way, up to now with little mechanical help. But 4,000 years of experience has forged a powerful bond to hold them together. Here on the Volturno River in Italy, you see some of the conditions our engineers face to keep open our lines of supply to the front. We too face hardships but we have the tremendous help of modern methods and machines. The fight against the elements holds up our advance almost as much as enemy action. There is no easy way to overcome these conditions. Everything has to be done the hard way. There's no thought of self here either. All for one and one for all. Help the other fellow and you help yourself. They have to do it the hard way. We on the home front don't have to. Aisles and passageways that are clear and unobstructed do much to keep supplies moving smoothly to the point where they are needed. Discarded materials and all types of obstructions in passageways slow down the steady flow of product. The time lost in clearing this obstruction would have taken the material to the worker who is waiting for it. Our men toiled through rain and mud to clear the way for others to follow. Mud, gluey, clinging mud. Whole areas to be cleared before supplies can be moved up. Men doing a dirty job the hard way because they have to. If we at home had to work under similar conditions, the flow of material to these fronts would be so seriously impaired that it might affect the outcome of entire campaigns. Many plants have men detailed to do nothing but keep floors and passageways clean and clear. But in some plants, it's up to the individual worker to keep his working area safe and clean. It is his responsibility to eliminate all hazards that might cause injury to himself or others. Unless carefully watched and checked, machines may splash liquid on the floor, or a careless job of oiling may leave a slippery film to make floors unsafe. Passing workers run the danger of a bad fall with perhaps a stay in the hospital. If you spill something, wipe it up. If your machine is not operating properly and is throwing cooling liquid where it isn't supposed to, have it checked at once. Free clogged drains, cut down excess flow of liquids, make proper adjustments. Do your part to keep floors clean and safe. Just a little extra thing you can do to help win the war. Combat engineers must go ahead of an advance to find and clear away hidden landmines. We should not need specialists to detect unseen hazards on our floors. A nail, carelessly discarded, may be as dangerous as a mine planted by the enemy. Make sure you are not responsible for this type of hazard. No matter how often some people are told to place rubbish in the containers provided, to say nothing of signs placed conspicuously, they insist on doing it the lazy way. 
filling up corners with inflammable material, topping it off with oily rags. Then another careless person ignoring the no smoking rule adds his contribution to the pile. Destruction follows the flight of bombs. Bombardiers are trained to hit their objectives with pinpoint precision. The fires following in the path of enemy bombings destroy the work of many hands. The piling of rubbish outside of containers furnished, the disregard of no smoking rules can lead to the same kind of fire and destruction. These allied ships and their cargoes can only be replaced by more sweat and toil on your part. A fire at the source of supply, the plant, would make the replacement almost impossible. Use the containers provided for rubbish and observe the no smoking rule. Under pressure, stockroom floors will jam up before material can be stored away properly. Every extra minute you take to move something you don't want to get something you do want is unnecessary time lost to production. Material should be placed so that what you need now is readily accessible and aisles must be left clear to take it away. Too many of us let a few good headlines make us complacent about the war. This war is not a sports event where lost contests can be made up another time, next week or next year. This war is for keeps. We've got to stay on the job every minute without one moment's letdown. We must all work safely and without loss of time to make up for equipment lost on land and sea. Timing is all important, whether it is for the mass destruction of enemy planes and tanks or for our own replacements, parts and material must arrive on schedule. In the field, difficult jobs are done today. The impossible takes a little longer. In our plants, poor housekeeping, careless and unsafe practices cause as much delay as conditions that cannot be avoided in theaters of war. Soldiers realize the importance of cleanliness and at every opportunity, they take care of their clothes and equipment. Their lives depend on their weapons operating efficiently. Keep your machines and individual working spaces clean so you can work efficiently. Good housekeeping speeds production. The men who fight to keep our freedom are staking their lives on the knowledge that we will supply abundantly and on time the equipment they need to win. Is it too much to ask that you help by reducing accidents due to carelessness and indifference, by keeping the rules of good housekeeping in the plants? With Garan rifle and Tommy gun, with sulfur drugs and blood plasma, with the best planes, tanks, ships and guns, our men land and move up to the line of battle, the finest equipped army in the world. The freedoms which gave us more of the good things of life than any other people on earth are now giving us more of what it takes than all the slave nations of the world together can produce. Our men are fighting not for conquest, but for the right to live our own lives, our own way, and our equal chance to rise as high as we want to climb. Let us not dissipate their efforts. We must continue beyond the hard work we do, beyond the extra war bonds we buy. A small but important way to do this is to pay attention to good housekeeping wherever we work. Our fighting men are doing their part. It's up to you to do yours.